This is a PC motherboard. It's the main circuit board that connects all the hardware components of a computer. There's a bunch of different sizes, but there's really only three that most PC builders need to know about. They range from ITX at the small end of the scale to ATX at the large end, and there's a medium-sized guy in the middle called MicroATX. It's important to pay attention to what boards are supported by the case you plan to use before you start building and before you start buying anything actually, because you don't want to run into any compatibility issues. For this tutorial, I'm going to be working with a full-size ATX board and a mid-size but kind of compact case. Before we even touch the board, we need to get the case ready. This main area here is where the motherboard's going to go. You'll notice all these little posts sticking up all over the place. These are called standoffs. The board sits on these and gets screwed down. It's extremely important to make sure the standoff layout matches the mounting point on your board. If you have too many standoffs, they can end up in the wrong places, and that can make contact with the electrical components on the back of the board, and that can cause a short. And then on the other side, if you don't have enough, things can become loose and wobbly, and you don't want that either. Some cases have a legend imprinted right on the installation area to identify the standoff layout for each supported board type. In my case, I'm using an ATX board, so this tells me I need to have my standoffs in locations A1 through A9. If you don't have a legend like this, you can always just check your product manuals as well for the motherboard and the case. And if all else fails, you can do this visually too. Just make sure there's a standoff everywhere there's a mounting hole on your board and nowhere else. Standoffs are made to screw into the case, and it's 10 times easier to work with them if you have an adapter. This little thing fits on top and lets you use a regular screwdriver to remove or install. If you don't have one of these, you can use a pair of pliers. That works too, but it'll probably scratch up the paint a little. Once you have your standoffs where they need to be, the other thing to take a look at before you bring your board in is the I.O. shield area. I.O. is just the inputs and outputs on the motherboard, stuff like USB, HDMI, headphone and mic jacks, and that kind of stuff. Some boards have a separate I.O. shield that requires installation, and others have it built in. Usually it's the higher end boards that have the built in type. So if your board has a separate shield, all you have to do is check the orientation by looking at the connectors on your board so you know which way to line it up. And then it just snaps into the cutout in the back of the case. And that's it. No tools needed. Super easy. Now it's time to get the motherboard into the case. Some people like to install their CPU, their coolers, and some other components outside of the case before they actually mount the board just because there's more room to do it that way. That's fine, but I personally don't tend to do it that way because I work with big air coolers or aftermarket AIO liquid cooling setups. And with that kind of stuff, if you mount it before, it adds a lot of extra bulk and weight, makes it harder to position the board and harder to plug stuff in around it. So for that reason, I do that stuff after, but either way works perfectly fine. So I'm gonna bring the board into the case, making sure the back panel connectors are in line with the IO shield and then gently lower it down onto the standoffs. And now we should be able to see all the standoffs lined up perfectly with the screw holes on the board. And this little one here is just a post. A lot of cases come with these. It just helps hold the board in the right spot when you're first bringing it into the case before you screw it down. Now we take the motherboard mounting screws, and these usually come with the case, so check your manual to identify which screws are the correct ones for the board. And we'll install them one by one into each hole. When you're tightening these, you want to just get them snug. You don't want to over tighten or put an excessive amount of force on the board because you can actually crack it or cause damage. Now we can start working on all our connections. Most PC cases come with some sort of front panel connectors like audio jacks or USB ports. And for that stuff to work, we gotta plug it into the board. Internal audio connectors for the front panel look like this. They can only plug into the audio header one way. You just look at the connector and make sure it lines up with the pin layout on the header itself. And if you're not sure where these headers are on your board, just open up the manual and it'll have a diagram that identifies the location for you. So I'm just gonna align it with the pins and gently push it down on there like that. Nice and easy. Next is the front panel USB. It looks like this. Again, I'm just gonna line it up with the pins on the header and gently push it down into place. This is a USB-C connector for the front panel. It looks a bit different than the one we just installed for the standard USB ports. And these usually plug in over here near the main power input. But again, check your manual because different boards have different layouts. And now for my least favorite part, the power switch, reset switch, and front panel LEDs. These all connect with these little tiny wires into a set of pins usually located in the bottom right corner of the board. 
It's a pain because the wires are really small and hard to work with. The pin layout's usually printed right on the board next to the connector, but it's really small and hard to read, so I always just go to the manual and follow the diagram in there. So we need to take each wire and push it onto the pins according to the diagram, paying attention to the polarity of the cables. That's the little plus and minus symbols on there indicating positive and negative. It's definitely not fun handling these little cables like this, but just take your time and make sure you get them on the right pins. This is a PWM fan connector. You'll likely have one of these that needs to attach to the CPU fan header on the motherboard to cool your CPU. And you might have other ones as well for cooling fans in your case. For these ones, I'm just going to attach them to the system fan headers. If you have any addressable RGB lighting, this is what that connector looks like. And just like everything else, it just slides right onto a set of pins on the header. Nice and easy. Now let's get the main power cables connected. Most boards are going to have a main power connector, and that's this big 24 pin slot here. And CPU power connectors as well, these can be 4 or 8 pins each, and higher end boards will most likely have more than one. If we look at the cables that come from the power supply, there's a little clip on there that locks onto the connector on the board to make sure it doesn't come out. Starting with the main power, we can just line it up so that the clip is on the correct side of the connector, and then press it down until it locks into place. And it's the same thing with the CPU power cable, so we can just repeat the process up here. Perfect! That's it! Now we can continue with the system build and getting all our other hardware installed. If you need help installing your CPU, RAM, hard drives, solid state drives, or CPU coolers, check out the PC building category on my channel. There's dedicated, detailed videos for all that stuff. And I'll leave some links to some of them down in the description of this video too. Thanks for watching and happy PC building.